Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Continuing to take a look at some of these bigger matchups on the week three college football slate. As we got the Miami Hurricanes going on the road to College Station playing the Texas AM Aggies. Game that was supposed to be college game day. A team, the Texas AM, top five team, a contender in the ACC heading on the road. Obviously, Texas AM stumbling against App State. Not college game day anymore. But if you're an Aggies fan, like you still have your goals out in front of you. We talk about Texas A&M a lot in the sense that if they can figure out this offense, which they obviously did not figure out Saturday, this is a team that is good enough and has the firepower to beat teams like Alabama like we saw last year, to beat teams like Georgia and win the SEC. There's not many teams in the country you can say that about. The Aggies are one of them. And quite frankly, Miami's a very talented team too before we get into it though. Just wanted to say thank you guys for all the support you guys have shown the channel. It's been a blast talking ball with you guys in the comment section. We love making these videos. We like talking ball with you guys. So if you do like the content, consider subscribing. We really do appreciate it. It helps the fellas out a lot. Dill, I'm going to kick it off to you. Let's start with this Texas A&M offense. What needs to happen to just be better? What are your takes here? I think we got to change the quarterback probably. I would think so. I mean, when you got the weapons they have, and, and Evan Stewart is turning into a real stud, it looks like the, the number one I think they needed. We all knew Aeneas Smith was a playmaker. Devin Chain is awesome. We know he's a very dynamic, big play running back who, who's just the ball's not getting into his hands because they can't sustain a drive. Can't and stay in the field. When you got all that talent around him, and, and their offense line, not the best, but not so bad, I think, I think you got to make a change at the quarterback spot because you just look at, at the QBR of a 21.3 against App State, not even in the ballpark what you need. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. And this is – it's been frustrating for Aggie fans because it, they've been like a player away, like the quarterback, the passing game away from being a team that can really make some noise in the college football playoffs, make some noise in the SEC, and they just haven't found it. The My main gripe is you brought in Haynes King because he's going to help that run game, because he's dynamic with his legs – quote unquote, I've heard this quote so many times, one of the fastest players on Texas A&M, which is incredible considering all the talent they have on the offense side of the ball. He's not really using his feet that much. And he's not a guy that is that explosive with his legs. He might be straight line speed, but in terms of setting up blocks, finding open space, making people miss, you haven't really seen that. Yeah, you got to know how to run. It's not like yes. this isn't track and field. Track. You, gotta, you gotta know how to manipulate defenders. And he's just not He's just not doing much of anything, like not running the ball well enough, obviously throwing the ball way to turnovers and, and a lot of things that just are unacceptable. And I, I don't know. Brad Johnson's a guy you've seen play really well at times. I, I don't and see Matt, Max Johnson's play. a guy at LSU who is very, very good. And Matt. he's a guy that you – very similar, we had this conversation with LSU. Jaden Daniels gets the nod because the offensive line struggles and Jaden Daniels is a guy that can extend plays with his feet. But you look at LSU's offense in a very similar vein that Texas A&M is, where are all your playmakers? They're on the outside. They're on the perimeter. you got to have a quarterback that can facilitate and get the ball to those guys. Haynes King doesn't seem to be that guy. I think Max Johnson, if anything, like what do you have to lose at this point? Trot out another offense like that. I just I can't imagine Jimbo Fisher, Texas A&M fans. And, and Johnson's a guy who knows how to play with a weak offensive line. He did it for did it last year at LSU. At LSU where they couldn't block anything. And I don't want to mean to say Texas A&M is in that league. They're not a great offensive line, I wouldn't say, but they're not horrible. Like, there's no excuses for that. I think the way Haynes King is is moving that offense. So I I, I really got to think you got to make a change just because the team again we have been saying it is far too talented to be weighed down so heavily by quarterback who again is at QBR of twenty one point three against an Appalachian State team who let and UNC run it up and down on them. Yeah, that, that's the biggest thing. I mean, UNC has a good offense, but App State gave up 63 points to UNC, and Texas A&M could score seven offensive points. I mean, one was obviously a kick return by Devin Chain. Now, on the other side of the ball, this is a team that Miami, if DJU doesn't figure it out in, in Clemson, we have a few try on Clemson winning the ACC. We're very high in Clemson, which I'm not feeling great about after watching DJU against Georgia Tech. If there's a team to step up, and, and as Pitt hasn't looked very good either, there's a team that steps up out of the ACC. It could be the Miami Hurricanes, and I'm very excited to see what Josh Gaddis, with a talented quarterback to, with like Tyler Van Dyke, heading to College Station, playing well. I mean, Texas A&M's defense is still astounding. Like, they're still a top-five defense in the country. 
I cannot wait to see what Josh Gaddis and Tyler Van Dyke have in store for a Texas A&M defense that is elite. Yeah, this is an interesting matchup, and I think a very good test to see where Miami is. I think a lot of people expect them to score a lot of points. Watching them so far, it's been a little up and down. I, I mean, you watch the first yes. half of that Southern Miss game, they were very much out of rhythm. And that, frankly, is a fair criticism of Josh Gaddis. Now he's been as an offensive coordinator. He is streaky, and, and it seems like he does lose his composure when things don't go well. And, and that's pretty much how that game went. And he did regain it in the second half, and they look like the offense we kind of think they should be. But he's not going to be able to have a, a half where they can't move the ball at all and beat a Texas A&M. I, I just don't – I think the defense is too good because they're not going to give up 30 points and a half, that's for sure. On the offensive side of the ball for Miami, I think the 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 most appealing and most like – I had the biggest concern about the playmakers on the outside – for Miami, like outside of Charleston Rambo, who you lose to the NFL, like these wide receivers last year, looking back, Mike Harley's gone. Keyshawn Smith was their leading receiver with 400 yards out of an offense that threw for over 3,000 yards last year. You didn't have many guys that you were really excited about coming back at the wide receiver spot. Xavier Estrepo and the chemistry that Tyler Van Dyke and Xavier Estrepo have shown, he's a guy that I think Tyler Van Dyke and this Miami team that – has so many playmakers like a guy like Keyshawn Smith, like Frank Ladson coming over from Clemson. They have some dogs on the outside. Who's the chain mover? Who's the guy on third and short you're going to go to? Xavier Estrepo has emerged at that position. I'm very excited to see what he can do against Antonio Johnson at that nickel spot against Texas A&M. There's going to be a lot of really fun matchups for NFL draft fans. There's going to be a lot of fun matchups for college football fans, and you're going to learn a lot about this Miami offense. Quite frankly, I've also been really impressed with their defense, and Mario Cristobal is kind of bringing that that culture change. They're tackling better. They're being more physical. A guy like Leonard Taylor is seemingly starting to dominate games up front. I, I like this Miami Hurricanes team, and we're going to find out a lot about them. As yeah, they go exactly, and, and I think if you look, Miami does look much tougher on the two line of scrimmages, and I think yes. that's one thing you thought was going to happen. Is in Whatever else Cristobal has lacked at other schools, like namely – play calling and some game management issues he's always had fairly good fronts and i think the offensive yeah. line especially in that second half against southern Miss, look very good in the defensive line too was dominating and I, but i will say this is like this is the litmus test for miami yes they've in the past their offensive lines have been rather weak their defensive lines have been typically pretty good but not great if they can really show out and, and be kind of out dueled an A&M team, I think that'll be a really good sign for Miami in terms of their level to compete because they do need to be more physical and tougher. Across and it's, the it's wide open the ACC with how bad Pitt has looked. Like Pitt beat West Virginia in what was thought of as a big win at home. West Virginia goes out and loses to Kansas. And then Pitt has a chance to beat Tennessee, but quite frankly, Tennessee was the better team for three quarters outside that first quarter. I and also Pitt, obviously, with the bang up quarterback now as well. Dill, I'm going to turn it over for a pick. Texas A&M is five and a half point favorites. The over-under is extremely low, which I can't blame the odds makers for making after watching that Texas A&M offense last week. It's a pro. 48 and a half. Do you like any plays in this game here? No, I... Me neither. I I mean, I kind of think Texas a and is going to win. I think you know, they, do, they do fumble it up a little bit, but I do think if they have Brad Johnson going in what the – Max Johnson, put some respect on my guy's name. Right, well, it's not my fault his dad played pro too, so I get all, we're all confused now. But, yeah, Max Johnson's a guy who I think can step in there and win him a football game because, again, I, I think across the board A&M is quite a bit better. I wonder if you hear quarterback news and Max Johnson is now the starter. I wonder if you see these lines shift because if Hans King – it's coming back out. You're not inspired. Well, if, if James King comes out, I'm taking the live bet on Miami right away. Me, once you see him trot out with the first team offense, yeah. hammer Miami. Yeah, this is a game I'm staying away from too. It's a game that's certainly going to be on my TV. We got again. I talk about. I have three monitors. I picked the three best games of the slate. This will be on the main mod. This will be on the TV, not on the laptop. I I want to find out more about this Miami team. I want to find out more about this Texas A&M team. This is a game where you're going to find out. You don't know much about Miami yet. I mean, Southern Miss and eh, Bethune Cookman and eh, Texas A&M, you figured out a little bit more about. But this is a big game, prime time. You're going to learn a lot about both teams. I cannot wait for this game. Even with Texas A&M with the loss, they still have everything out in front of them. I as mean, they go A&M has lost games in the past, and and then also have 
in the same season beating Alabama. So but this is, a, this is a team that I think can – well, we said, yeah, go out and beat Alabama. That's how good this team is. Just I'm putting excited. Max Johnson – I think they – I if I hear Max Johnson, I might take the other side and just take him to cover because I think they might house him. Yeah, I, I I hope we see Max Johnson too. I just I want to see this offense. I want to see some of these playmakers, like you said, Evan Stewart and you. I want to see Evan Stewart so bad. Yeah, because he looked so good. I thought. Yeah, that that that'll do it for the boys. We again, we appreciate you guys checking us out. If you do like the content, again, subscribe to the channel. Let us know in the comment section what your pick is. The boys do not have a pick for this game. We appreciate you guys checking us out. We'll talk to y'all later.